Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps RC channel. Thanks for subscribing and hanging out with me. Today is pretty special because I have some new stuff from Furry Bee here, but more importantly, I'm gonna show you how to do some indoor racing for under $100. Now, this includes everything you need to get up set up and fly um, and mainly we're going to talk about the furry bee vr ones on this channel today uh, for this video the vr ones are pretty sweet they're around forty dollars it's going to give you a 4.3 inch screen on here and dual diversity antennas and if you're new to this dual diversity antennas are great you have a patch antenna on the right here and on the left you have your 5.8 circular polarized antenna very important for getting super clear video you're going to get a lot of range out of this dual antenna setup uh, and, and before even three months ago we weren't getting this kind of setup for around forty dollars you're playing paying at least around $150. So I'm gonna show you this little setup I have here. This is the JJRC H36, and this is one that I modded. I put an all-in-one camera on here, and I only had to wire up the power cable on here. I didn't have to wire up anything else uh, to get this and working with FPV. So this is super cool and very, very easy. Now what I'm gonna show you here is this original board that came with it, a little bit closer, and I'm gonna show you where this all-in-one camera power cable solders up to. And once you have power to this, you can fly this entire setup, FPV indoors, with the little microcontroller that it comes with. Uh, it takes two AA batteries. So for under $100, we're gonna start doing some FPV. But let me go ahead now, I'll take a moment to show you that flight controller a little closer up and show you how to get started with yours. This is the H36 frame that you're looking at here with all the motors and props on here. This flight controller is different and the camera is different. That's what I added to it. Uh, this was another video that we did, the H36 uh, Tiny Whoop hack video. And uh, I'll put a link down below over there so you can see this kind of setup. But to do it even cheaper than this one, you can use the original flight controller that came along with it. Now, all I did was pop this one off and put this one on. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about doing it cheaper. So. Just wanted to show you this frame as an example. When you get it, it's gonna have a blue cover over top of this, and this one will be on here. So take that blue cover off, and then what you're gonna see is the top of this flight controller. Now this is the rear of it right here, and this is where the power connections are. So once you pull off the top of it, you have this nice flat spot right here, and what I do is I mount my camera right over top of this area right here. So you get your all-in-one flight controller and camera here. You're going to mount this right on top of here with a piece of VHB. You don't need one of those fancy little uh, camera holders, those 3D printed camera holders. That just adds a little more weight. So we're gonna save some weight and the camera is gonna stay put. So if you look on amazon.com, you can get these rolls of VHB. It's 3M VHB tape. Take a piece of it, put it underneath your camera here and you're going to mount it right on top. And I'll show you an example of that later. But on the back here, this is where you're going to power your camera setup from. Now make sure that your camera can handle 3.7 volts uh, and 5, 5 volt cameras. So if you can, you'll be able to power it off of this. So this is the way you do that. Now we're going to take a soldering iron and we're going to pay attention to these two cables right here that come off the back. We're gonna solder red on that side and black on this side, right directly to where the quad power cables are. And that's gonna power the all-in-one FPV camera setup here for you, uh, for your VTX. So I'll go ahead, I'll take a moment to do that now for you. Now, once you've soldered up your positive and your negative wires here, Make sure that these two are not touching. You don't want any solder to bleed over into this side because you'll short stuff out. Um, so once you have this all set up, you can go ahead and grab a battery and power it up. And now you can see that the flight controller is lit up. It's looking for the transmitter as well. I have that over here. I can turn that on. And it should stop. Okay, there we go. So the transmitter's on, it's bound up already to this little tiny transmitter over here, this little deal here. And what I'm gonna do next is take a little strip of VHB and put underneath 
the camera itself. And the camera is going to mount right over top of the flight controller. So cut just a tiny, tiny little piece of VHB like this. And then take a little razor blade. And try not to touch the VHB too much because it gets less sticky. Now this stuff is awesome. It's non-conductive and it works great in between electronic components that you don't want to touch and short out. So you want to make sure you got a nice big piece of it on there to separate these two boards and just in case I'm going to unplug that and then I'm going to stick my camera down. I'm going to make sure it's on top of the VHB on both sides. We don't want anything touching there. We don't want any kind of shorts. And I'm going to tuck those cables back in there like that. You can even leave a little mini zip tie if you want to, to be super neat. And this is going to ride right on top of your mini quad frame. And of course, this one's going to be already mounted to your H36. The H36 was like $16 on GearBest's website. So you're going to make a tiny, tiny little quadcopter, uh, FPV quadcopter setup with this. So now I can plug in the battery again. So now I've got power to my camera and I've got power to the flight controller. Pretty awesome. Okay, so I have two sets of goggles here. One on the left is $550, and that's a super high-end pair of HD goggles. Those are Fat Shark Dominator HD's uh, V2s. Over on the right-hand side of the screen, I have the Furry B VR1s, and those are $40. Now, you'll notice some similarities here. If I tilt them this way just a little bit, you see this patch antenna right here that I added, and another 5.8 right-hand circular polarized antenna. Now, to add both of those on there, you're over $600 with this setup. Now, let's go ahead and move these out of the way. Uh, for $40, we also have dual diversity here with a patch and a 5.8 circular polarized antenna. So, very, very nice. It also has auto search on here. So, when you first plug them in, it should look for your channel and lock onto your channel. You have some nice padding around the front, 4.3 inch screen in here pretty bright and you have a head strap that goes around the side uh, around the back of your head you have adjustable straps here on each side so you can fit a smaller to a larger size head now it also comes with your little uh, video in so you can actually get coaxial video in composite video in and you can watch movies from another device if you wanted to um, additionally you have your power cable here that's a traditional JST connector that plugs in on the very top here in this DC port. If I angle it right, you might be able to see that. So it says DC here, comes in there, snaps it on on the side to get them out of the way there, make them nice and clean. Uh, over here on the right we have the channel button and this is going to change channels uh, up to 40 channels one here so including race band as well so if you wanted to go outside and do some racing with friends you can do that as well up top is your band button I believe you have five different bands on here as well over here is your mode button this is going to change the source of the video so if you wanted to switch over to video in you can do that as well over on the left hand side you have your uh, auto search button over here next to what looks like sort of a speaker so Let's go ahead and plug these in. I'm using a 3S JST Nanotech here. I've got a little 850 on the bench. You can use something larger. You can use something like a uh, 2200 if you wanted to, a 3S 2200, because the volt range on here is actually uh, 2S to 3S. You can use 2 or 3S, but 3S is going to be uh, a little better and last a little longer. 3S is going to get you around 18 hours working time if you use something uh, like a 2200 like I was saying earlier. Now let's go ahead and plug in this little tiny whoop here and we'll get some video up on the screen here to show you and I'll lower the camera and let's bring these goggles in a little closer. You can see it already loaded so that's pretty decent very nice screen uh, and I can go ahead just just for the fun of it I can change channels here and I'll press the CH button there and I'm just gonna scroll through until I get back to that main screen but up at the top left you can see where it says channel A-8 so you're on channel you're on band A channel 8 
So pretty cool and a pretty straightforward set of goggles for this price, not bad at all. So that's pretty much it for the setup. And I have a couple other examples of something here that they sent me. This is the Furry B 5.8 circular polarized antennas. And I believe these are around 10 to $12. And they feel a lot like the Fat Shark antenna that's back there. The body of the stem on here feels really tight and rigid. So it feels like it's gonna be very, very, very durable on a micro quad, uh, something like a 130 to 150 size. These are a little shorter, so those are nice to use on the smaller quads. Uh, and it has a pretty decently durable top part on there as well. Now the alternative to that, you can put these on 180s and uh, 250 size, 200 size quads. These are a lot like what you've seen from Amway. They're very, very similar. You see me flying some of the bluer ones, um, the blue Amways on my quads and these are the red edition by furry bee and i'll put the link down below so you can check those out too and those are a really good price on these as well but that's it for show and tell today guys i uh, just wanted to show you what's new what came in and uh, i wanted to show you how to fpv for under a hundred dollars so thanks again for hanging out on the bench with me i'm justin davis from drone camps rc i'll see you on the next one mm -hmm.